As we said, the third day of the RNC will focus on foreign policy and national security. During their time in office, the two candidates remaining in this year's race have taken very different approaches to relationships with other countries. President Biden has generally maintained relations with U.S. allies. Former President Trump has been known for reaching out to leaders from uh, countries that the U.S. hasn't always been on friendly terms with. For example, his praise of Russia's Vladimir Putin and his meeting with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. So what could a second Trump term look like? I want to bring in now John Hudson from The Washington Post. He's a national security reporter who focuses on diplomacy and the State Department. So talk to us about the changes that we might expect to see under a second Trump administration. Well, the most important things to think about are the two massive conflicts that he's going to inherit on day one. So you have the conflict in Gaza. Um, right now, the, the Trump has said that he is going to encourage the Israelis to wrap it up quickly. Uh, but at the same time, he's always said that the United States needs to allow Israel to finish the job. Uh, he's been critical of President Biden's decision to pause one shipment of 2,000 pound bombs to Israel. Um, that, uh, of course, is something that is just a small drop in the bucket of all of the arms that the Biden administration has sent. Uh, so you could expect uh, a, a sort of unvarnished, scorched earth uh, Israeli campaign in Gaza to the extent that has even been seen at this point in time. So that's West one conflict. Um, another conflict is Ukraine. He has famously said that he would seek to resolve the conflict in the first 24 hours. Uh, I think more realistically, um, what advisors have, have said that I've talked to at least, that he would push uh, aggressively to have peace negotiations open up uh, very quickly um, and even potentially use very coercive tactics to get that done. For instance, going to the Ukrainians and saying, if you don't enter peace negotiations with the Russians, I'll halt military transfers to Ukraine, and then going to Russia at the same time and saying, if you don't open up negotiations with the Ukrainians, uh, I'm going to double, triple, quadruple the amount of arms being sent over there. Um, so potentially you could see some very dramatic shifts from where we are uh, right now, especially when it comes to two of the most important and deadly conflicts happening in the world right now. Yeah. And, uh, and on that, what does the message uh, about maybe pulling back from NATO, about pulling back from Ukraine? a more isolationist approach send to the rest of the world? Yeah, well, Trump has made very clear he wants the burden shifting, as security experts say, uh, to weigh more heavily on the Europeans. He believes that the United States spends too much money defending European countries uh, that are rich and should be able to fend for themselves. Uh, and so the way that he has communicated this over the last several months has been saying, look, if there are European countries that do not spend enough on their own security, and by the measurement that's not spending uh, more than 2% of your GDP on defense, then he's going to um, perhaps even encourage Russia or stand by if Russia does threaten those countries, uh, because after all, they didn't pay up. Uh, and so he's largely depicted NATO as a sort of uh, insurance and protection racket uh, that the United States has not been getting enough benefit from. Uh, so in that regard, that would be a pretty significant shift. It's different from the way that Biden talks about NATO as essentially uh, the world's most successful military alliance born out of the Cold War that doesn't really need much modification uh, from where it's been over the last several decades. So, uh, John, let's talk a little bit about uh, what the president has said about, uh, about NATO. Um, there's very... There's very big differences between what the former president feels about NATO and President Biden feels about NATO. How is that being perceived by our allies? Yeah, well, unsurprisingly, um, our allies in Europe are quite nervous. They would like the United States con to continue the level of investments that they have made in European security, and they don't want that to change at all. So they're deeply concerned. Uh, and uh, when it comes to Eastern European allies, especially the Baltic states, 
countries that view the Ukraine conflict as uh, an existential crisis where by if Putin were to come away as victorious, uh, that would threaten their own security. Uh, they're extremely worried. Um, I will say there are some outlier countries. Um, Hungary would be one. Um, I think the Italians have paved the way to potentially have smooth relations with a future Trump administration. Uh, they are of the more illiberal sort of right-wing populist bent. Um, they don't necessarily see uh, a Trump as uh, as much of a threat as the rest of Western, mainstream, and Eastern Europe does. All right. John Hudson, thank you.